Yo, it's your boy Logos, and I understand that PragerU has a, I don't know, long history about being biased in a particular direction, like many other media companies. And today I want to do that video about was the Civil War about slavery. This seems like a very easy video for them to do. It's in the documents when secession happened in the 1800s, why the South seceded from the Union. So any thought or idea about it not being about slavery is just idiocy to me. I also plan on doing a add-on Shay Checkmate Lincoln Knights videos where he talks about the lost cause myth and all the different aspects of the Civil War. Plus, for one, I love history. But two, I think those videos information should be more widely known simply because of the fact that not a lot of people know the deeper history of the Civil War or the different dynamics at play. And lastly, this lost cause narrative is so ridiculous. I remember seeing that stuff myself growing up and it never made sense to me. I had a conversation online with the guy about it and he took it in some weird racial type of way where he tried to like, I don't know, threaten that he wanted the South to rise again or he wanna say the N word or some idiocy. So this stuff doesn't surprise me, but I'm curious to learn more about the information. That way when I have conversation about this type of stuff, I can be more informed. And not just talk out my ass because of emotion or how I want to see things. So let's get into it. Was the American Civil War fought because of slavery? More than 150 years later, this remains a controversial question. Why? Because many people don't want to believe that the citizens of the southern states were willing to fight and die to preserve a morally repugnant institution. There has to be another reason, we are told. Well, there isn't. The evidence is clear and overwhelming. Slavery was, by a wide margin, the single most important cause of the Civil War for both sides. Even the state's rights argument, people love to throw out there as some type of, I don't know, bait and switch. It was the whole state's rights to continue having slavery. <laughs> so all you're doing is just pushing the can about two inches further down the line. It's still the same thing, but at the end of the day, People are going to believe what they want to believe because it makes them feel better. It's hard to take accountability for your actions or your thoughts or beliefs if it makes you uncomfortable. Some people rather just be stuck in their current way of thinking instead of just saying like, eh, maybe this doesn't make sense. Maybe this isn't the right way to think. No matter what I was taught or somebody else said to me, when I really think about it and the whole concept of it all, it's just not right. Before the presidential election of 1860, a South Carolina newspaper warned that the issue before the country was the extinction of slavery and called on all who were not prepared to surrender the institution to act. Shortly after Abraham Lincoln's victory, they did. The secession documents of every Southern state made clear, crystal clear, that they were leaving the Union in order to protect their peculiar institution of slavery. And this, in the Civil War, it, it wasn't like just a random thing or it just came out of nowhere. There was legislation, years and decades of abolitionists and other people trying to end slavery. You had some type of like legislation like the Three-Fifths Compromise and other legislation that tried to limit slavery as they added more states, especially in the West, or even places like in the Midwest. And that will become a problem when the Civil War does come about. So it's not just all of a sudden people's mind changed, everybody was cool with slavery, and then just something having to change. Now, like people, I think for like a while, there was people that could under, clearly understand that slavery was wrong. But maybe the majority of the people, or the people who was in power enough to actually change it or stop it, couldn't do so at the time, or those people didn't exist. It wasn't like people were just blind to the evil of slavery, where everyone was. No, does it mean that everybody that lived in the United States or the 13 colonies even had slaves too to begin with? Because for you to have slaves, you must be very wealthy. That's how it was then. That's how it was thousands and thousands of years ago earlier. You need to have money to purchase people, purchase food, purchase all these different type of stuff to have a plantation or a very large property or a state. That's always has been all across the world. A phrase that at the time meant the thing special to them. The vote to secede was 169 to zero in South Carolina, 166 to seven in Texas, 84 to 15 in Mississippi. In no Southern state 
was the vote close. Alexander Stevens of Georgia, the Confederacy's vice president, clearly articulated the views of the South in March 1861. Our new government, he said, was founded on slavery. Its foundations are laid. Its cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery, submission to the superior race, is his natural and normal condition. Yet despite the evidence, many continue to argue that other factors superseded slavery as the cause of the Civil War. Some argue that the South only wanted to protect states' rights. But this raises an obvious question. The states' rights to what? Wasn't it to maintain? <laughs> That's the thing, like these people who, would, uh, who have these types of arguments, even like people that have like online and more known like Razor Fist, that little, he's like a little weirdo. He like have this like type of like states rights bullshit. And he will have like his legions of like incels talking about this type of thing. Like it's actually like a real thing. Like states rights to what? It, it's funny, like people with such a blind adherence to an ideology, whether it be something like this or something that's much more leftist or Marxist or anything like that. They don't want to take it like two or five steps further to the whole logical end of what they're trying to do. Because if they do, they understand that the whole argument doesn't make sense or just arguing against itself. Usually people with this type of thinking aren't really that smart or educated. And I'm not saying for you to, if you didn't go to college or anything like that, that you're an idiot. But I'm saying like you just really, really slow intellectually. You don't really critically think problem solve or look at it from different aspects or ways. Like it is what it is. And, and honestly, we don't care about offending someone who thinks like this. ...and spread <laughs> slavery. Moreover, states' rights was not an exclusive Southern issue. All the states, North and South, sought to protect their rights. Sometimes they petitioned the federal government. Sometimes they quarreled with each other. In fact, yep. Mississippians complained that New York had too strong a concept of states' rights because it would not allow Delta planters to bring their slaves to Manhattan. The South was preoccupied with states' rights because it was preoccupied first and foremost with retaining slavery. And here's another thing. These people who be believe the states' rights thing, and they talk about it's all about protecting the state and not having an overpowerful government over you. They completely ignore the fact that they support it and sign into a law that you can go and get like slaves that ran away in other slate in other states where slavery was abolished. So you can overwrite the rights of another state to go and get your slave, even though their slavery is legal. You can go and snatch and kidnap and steal a human array because in your state, hundreds or thousands of miles away, slavery is legal, but the actual state that you're in and the law you should be abiding by, yeah, it's not allowed. So obviously, like I was saying earlier, people with this type of short term, short sighted mindset, they can't really make good arguments because almost every argument turns back against them, especially when you're trying to defend or be on the side of something so ridiculous and stupid to begin with. And this isn't an argument saying that slavery doesn't exist still or anything like that. This whole, this whole thing is about the American Civil War. So don't try to change it into some type of, I don't know, different argument or a different, I don't know, arena or venue, like in the Middle East or Africa or Asia or any other place in the world, because for somehow some reason you want to make this bullshit argument about states' rights. Some argue that the cause of the war was economic. The North was industrial and the South agrarian. And so the two lived in such economically different societies that they could no longer stay together. Not true. What? In the middle of the 19th century. How does that make sense? Because one area of the country is agrarian and one area of the country is industrious. That means they couldn't like coexist. That's stupid. That makes absolutely no sense. Even now today, but even back then, there was, you know, places all across the world where you will have like, you know, major cities, especially the Industrial Revolution as jobs went to more cities and such and so forth, like in the north. And you will have the countryside still with people still farming, still doing things the way that we've been doing it for hundreds, thousands of years. How does that make any sense? That if anything, that weakens your country. Because the south, 
they wouldn't have the technology or the industrial power to keep up or be as prosperous as other countries. You'll just be stuck creating products that'll be shipped off to be manufactured into actual highly more sought after goods instead of combining or staying into one country where you have the products or the ingredients or whatever you want to call it. I can't think of the actual exact words, the resources already farmed or being made and then you send it up to a different part of your country to be made and then sent out exported to make money. I don't understand how having two different economies means you have to go to a civil war. That just sounds like a bullshit was smart. So a bullshit reason to me. In century, both North and South were agrarian societies. In fact, the North produced far more food crops than did the South. But Northern farmers had to pay their farmhands who were free to come and go as they pleased. While Southern plantation owners exploited slaves over whom they had total control. And it wasn't just plantation owners who supported slavery. The slave society was embraced by all classes in the South. The rich had multiple motivations for wanting to maintain slavery, but so did the poor non-slaveholding whites. The peculiar institution ensured that they did not fall to the bottom rung of the social ladder. That's why another argument that the Civil War couldn't have been about slavery because so few people own slaves has little merit. Some of the same people who will say that nonsense that because it was so few people who owned slaves, not about slavery, are some of the same people who will, who I'll probably agree with, talk about the government going to foreign wars for the sake of money or power. How could you possibly say that government currently now goes to war for power or non holistic or righteous race, but then somehow act like people couldn't do the same just a hundred or so years ago, 200 or so years ago? Because this type of stuff, people in power, kings, oligarchs, anything like that has been going to war for their own means, whether it be glory, money, territory, for thousands of years. So, like, what is that supposed to mean? Once again, it just sounds like something that I would hear from an uneducated person who expect me not to think at all after the bullshit that come out their mouth. Finally, many have argued that President Abraham Lincoln fought the war to keep the Union together not to end slavery. That was true at the yeah, outset of the war. Yeah, exactly. But like, he did so with the clear point? knowledge that keeping the union together meant either spreading slavery to all the states, exactly. an unacceptable solution, or vanquishing it altogether. Exactly. What does that prove? Like, does that somehow mean that the South didn't fight to keep slavery? If somehow Abraham Lincoln, which he didn't, it didn't initially do this war or slavery, like we, I know, I don't think most people know. I, well, I can't say I, I haven't met most people, but my understanding of like history and most people not really caring about history as much. I would say most people don't know that he did it to preserve the union. But as a black man, I don't give a fuck. That doesn't concern me or bother me. Either way, I wanted the country to stay, stay together and I wanted slavery to end if I was there back then. I wasn't in a lot back then. So like having this whole emotional attachment to this whole reason for the war starting just doesn't make sense. Neither, neither does it undermine your argument. It's just, it's just a fact of history. Just like the fact of history that they wrote on the documents they want to preserve slavery. In a famous campaign speech in 1858, Lincoln said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Of course. What was it that divided the country? Slavery. It was slavery and only slavery. And it was a problem for decades and decades and decades leading up to the Civil War. Like I said earlier with the Three Fields Compromise. And then you had Bleeding Kansas. I forgot to mention that earlier. I think Kansas, Missouri, when they was fighting over getting there first and establishing it as a free or a slave state. Like this stuff, like I said, didn't just come out of nowhere. And you can't be so divided over such a fundamental issue like that when you're involving people. And you're involved in economics too because that's free labor. So yes, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And this is easy to notice because there'll be fighting, arguments, raids. I can't remember that um there was this white abolitionist, John Brown, I think his name was. I think it was John Brown, but he did like his he tried to start like a slave uprising. You had um another slave uprising that they actually did a movie on a few years ago, I can't remember. But like he's saying, like 
the hell that should say not the hell well yes the house the country was divided and it doesn't last very long look at what happened to rome with their civil wars it took them about two or three civil wars until they eventually just fell apart and turned into a dictatorship under augustus so it doesn't just happen overnight it's a slow build up and then you get to a certain point where it all collapse or the power just comes in on itself into one person with an iron fist to stop it usually involving armies and violence he continued i believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free it will become all one thing or all the other exactly lincoln's view never changed and as the war progressed the moral component ending slavery became more and more fixed in his mind his emancipation proclamation in 1863 turned that into law slavery is the great shame of america's history no one denies that but it's to america's everlasting credit that it fought the most devastating war in its history in order to abolish slavery. As a soldier, I am proud that the United States Army, my army, defeated the Confederates. In its finest hour, soldiers wearing this blue uniform, almost 200,000 of them, former slaves themselves, destroyed chattel slavery, freed four million men, women, and children from human bondage, and saved the United States of America. I'm Colonel Ty Sigley, Professor and Head, Department of History at the United States Military Academy, West Point, for Prager University. Okay, so I'll give Prager you credit on this, even though this is like a pretty, you know, this is like a layup. This ain't like you hitting a three-point shot from like 20 feet out, and it's like game seven. <laughs> this is like a pretty easy topic to get right, but still, I'm giving him credit for getting it right. And it is nice they use like a army, a clearly like a high ranking um, army soldier or some type of military person to like talk about this topic. Because for one, I respect the military. I am come from a military family, so I'm not going to disrespect the military or the United States. But either way, of course, I agree with this. They use history, they use facts. Um, they didn't go deep into the detail, like I said, about the compromises and the legislation, but they need to. If you're curious, you can find it online. There's articles, there's books, there's YouTube videos, and it's all valuable information. I still want to do the Atten Shea stuff just because I think that content is very entertaining. And I think it'll teach me something. I think it'll teach us all something. This stuff is pretty cut and dry for me. There's really not much to debate here. It like it is what it is. I want to keep this country moving forward and having honest conversations is how you do it. Whether it's about history, politics, or technology, just gotta be honest. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Peace.